The camera's rolling. Okay. Widow, uh, tell us about the the structure of, of this group, what it's called, the, the structure of it. All right, let's go. Guys, rolling. All right, boys, you're rolling. All right, okay. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah, so uh, tell, tell me about the, what was the name of the software and, and uh, you know, what was the structure of it? Of the Savage Club, we have, uh, we have uh, like a uh, headquarters. Then we have the uh, Supreme Prayers that he, that uh, Black or Marvin, they you know they rule over all the other prayers and divisions and stuff like that. You know they just, you know. Now, excuse me. Yeah. All right, cameras rolling. Okay. So, Ruben, what you said before, you want to know the structure of, of, of the club? Well, what's the name of it? And what's, what's the structure? Okay, the name of the club is the Savage Skulls. We have like different divisions, you know, and every division is run by a prayer, the vice, and the warlord. And we have Gestapo, that's like the Gestapo is like the police or something. They enforce the rules, make sure everybody pays their dues. And then we have the what you call uh, uh, the Supreme Prayers. He's in charge of all the divisions, and uh, Supreme Vice and Warlord, and they're in charge of the whole of all the divisions, you know. Uh, how how uh, wide a group is it? I mean, uh... well, we have division in all uh, in all boroughs, you know, and we have a division of um, in Queens, in Long Island. The savage called them, uh, they call it the MC division, they are motorcycles, you know? Alright, uh, now, um, say you have a Gestapo and enforce the rules. What, tell me about the Gestapo, what rules do they enforce? What rules do you have? Do you have rules to get into the club? Do you have yeah. rules to get out of the club? Tell me about that. Well, they gotta, like, to get into the club, they have to be initiated in. The Gestapo does that. They have to uh, collect dues, the Gestapo does that. When they get initiated out, the Gestapo does that. Well, for initiation into the club, the uh, person that's, that's going to that's gonna join the club, he has to be in the middle, and all uh, the members around, and like, when, we, when, I, when I give the order to fire them up, they just like beat them up for, they be hitting on them, you know, for a couple of minutes till I say stop. That's the initiation in. Now what's the initiation out? The same thing. The same, the around the circle, like, they be beating on them, you know, a couple of minutes till I say stop, and you know, that's it. Young lady here, tell us, uh, tell us about the, the uh, ladies' division of the uh, uh, Savage Skull. We are starting it up. Tell me what you're starting, what are you starting on? A division of girls, we're trying to get some girls. Like, to get, like, you know, like the 16th division of the guys, you know, we're trying to get the girls. Why, why are the girls, uh, what, what, what do the girls get out of a club? I mean, what, what's the advantage of being in a club for girls? Well, I can answer that, you know. Okay, go ahead. You know, for the fun, like, the, the men or the boys, you know, they be in the club, and the girls just be there, like, to help out, they, you know, help up keep the club clean, they help, you know, cook for us sometimes, stuff like that, you know, they keep the club clean and stuff like that. We could, I think we could go out with other guys. Not really. No, not really. Was, uh, the guys, girls can go out with outsiders and stuff. You know? We can't go out with outsiders. Guys are not, not in our club. Well, the idea of violence with other gangs, with other gangs, we get someone else here. Uh, with the violence of other gangs, right? Oh, no. Yeah. Tell me about your, your attitude toward uh, guns or things like this in the Savage No, we don't wear guns. The only time we have war is these people. It's when we mess with our, you know, we mess with our people. That's the only time we have war. Now there's two divisions over here. There's the 24th and 16th. See what I'm saying? So you don't have guns? Is that the, is that the attitude? You know, no. You don't, you don't, I have not say without trouble with us, you know. 
they start fucking with all our boys, you know? That's the only thing. We're a piece of people, man. When other gangs mess with our boys, we never go against nobody, not unless they go against us. Right, what's the attitude here towards uh, heroin and uh, glue? Jerry. No, we don't mess with glue, we don't mess with heroin, we don't mess with nothing for wine. We got a lot of wine. Yeah. That's all the skulls, man. We have strict laws, strict rules in our club against uh, use of dope or glue. When we have find somebody using dope or glue, they get fired up, you know? That's, you know, when they get in the circle and they get beat up with all, by all the other members, you know? But we don't allow the use of dope or glue or any drugs. I know, no, the no. police have, have had on their records for instance, that you're using, you know, some guys are using sniffing glue and you will pick up some guys and decide to skull. No, so we don't know nothing about that. Yeah, but there's, in every club there's always going to be people that are going to be fucking up that don't, you know, follow the rules. You know, in every club you always have, you know, a couple of people that don't want to follow the rules and they'll be sniffing glue and they'll be shooting dope, you know, and we just take care of these people, you know? The fun of it. Uh, and then we just like to be together, to enjoy ourselves in a club with our with our members, you know, with our girls. We just sit in a club, we have fun, you know, we listen to records, we dance, we you know, we drink and you know, we have fun, you know. Mostly because, like, there'd be other clubs in our neighborhood, and we, you know, we form a club to protect ourselves from the other clubs. Because they'd be messing with us, you know. We don't have, like, you're by yourself, and another club messes with you, you ain't got nobody to back you up. If you, if you form your own mm -hmm. club, you know, they'd be, you know, they won't fuck with you that much, you know, when you have a lot of people backing you up. Now, I'd like to get your idea on this, this relationship. We don't have no, you know, we don't have no war against white people. They, no. As, as I'm saying, like the, uh, at the screaming schools, most of the screaming schools are white people. And we don't have war against them. Now, if they have any war against them, we give them more. Any time. Well, what has been your own personal experience in, in schools or anything else? No, we don't have any war against them. We don't have any problems. Yeah, white gangs. White gangs. Right, no, mostly, gangs. Like, uh, like in Lehman High School in the Bronx, a lot of uh, white gangs we go to school, especially the ministers Bronx, and like members of uh, the Savage Girls or the Imperial Bachelors that are all black in Puerto Rican, they go to that school, and like the school, the majority of the people that go to Lehman High School are all white, you know, say like 90 percent, you know, and like the ministers Bronx, when the black and Puerto Ricans go up there flying their colors at the Savage Girls or Bachelors, they strip them, you know, they take their colors away and they won't let them fly colors, and the girls, you know, they're always harassing the girls and bothering them, and throwing rocks in them, you know. That's all the, uh, like the ministers find these white clicks up in Lehman High School, you know? Minister Brown, they take out their things on uh, a lot of our uh, brothers and sisters that's in that school. You know, they be beating them up or things like that. So, you, and if any time we go up there to try and help our people, what's going to happen? The police right. harass us each time. All right, now, uh, tell me about your relation with the neighbors. Okay. Okay. Right, so tell me about the, the, the white gangs up there. Well, like, uh, my cousin goes to this school and he has told me that they jumped him about five or six times, the Minister Bronx. And we never, you know, bother with them or anything, but if we was to go up there to bother with them, all we get is harassed by the police and things like this. Tell me about your own relationship with the neighborhood. I mean, how do people feel about you as a, as a gang? Uh, how, how do you feel about them? What do you do? What's, what's your hassle? Well, some people get along along with us, you know. Some people are for us, and then we have people that are against us, that, you know, everything we do, they call the cops on us right away, you know. But some people in this neighborhood, you know, they're real nice, you know. They help us out, they give us money and stuff like that, you know, to help ourselves out, you know. Storekeepers against you, or, 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 or you got any experiences? I think some of the storekeepers are for us because, like, uh, most of the storekeepers we help. You know? How do you help them? Tell me how you help them. When they need us, we're there. 
Do me a specific thing. Like sometimes we'd be hanging out on these stores down the street and things like this, you know. And uh, when they get in here, rest from other guys or people, you. Our relation with other clubs? Yeah. But we get along with mostly all the clubs in this area. We have like a, you call it a brotherhood or a family. We get like, like uh, get a brother, we're all nice, Gavin. Mm -hmm. Like if any of these clubs have any static, we help them out. If we get any static, they help us out, you know? We get along with all these clubs in their area, except for a couple of them. Like the Black Pearls, you know, stuff, clicks, clubs like that, you know? Now, the ones you don't get along with, how the ones you get along with? Well, they don't want us flying colors in their turf or area, whatever you want to call it. And they're always looking like when we pass through their turf, they're always <coughs> harassing us, you know, bothering us, telling us to turn over our colors. And we don't go for all that, you know? Uh, now, uh, tell me about the, the girl division. What what uh, this property of? Well, just explain that. Uh, oh, that, uh, like the, the guys, they wear sacks. I, I want to know where... You know, the idea of this uh, project here, whatever it is, is how to get right uh, Tell us about your, your uh, relationship with the, uh, the way you Come on, live. come on, stop fucking around. How do people get along with you? How do you get along with people? I'm trying to get a lot of people in this specific thing. I mean, what, what do your parents say about being in a club? This young lady, tell, tell me, what did your parents say about you being in a club? This uh, gang? Well, she don't want me, but... I'd be in it like... Well, tell me your mother doesn't want you, so I know who you're talking about. Your mother don't want me. Now, uh... Like... Well, well go, go ahead. Why, why are you in the club then? Why, why... Can you tell her this is not so? Or what, what uh, happens here? You know, well, what, uh... What, what do you answer to that when she says, I don't want, I don't want you to get hurt, so forth? Well, what about the, the other girls? What was the reaction of parents to the, uh, being a gang? Uh, well, I can answer that. Yeah. But like, most parents don't want their kids or their children to be in club because they're afraid that they might get hurt or something like that. But, you know, like, like my parents don't want me to be in a the club. They said I'll get hurt and stuff like that. But, like, you you know, you got to know how to take care of yourself, you know, because you just can't go around looking for trouble. That's the way you get hurt. But you know how to take care of yourself, you know, you won't be getting hurt and, you know, you won't be getting in trouble and stuff like that, you know? Now, is the gang any form of protection from getting hurt? I mean, does it work both ways? You well, if, if you're in the club, in your club, and you be hanging out in your club, and, you know, be sleeping down, you know, there's no way you can be getting hurt because it's better than hanging out somewhere else, you know? Once you're in your club, you know, it's like you have protection, you know? It's like a... Fellas smoking a cigar over there. What? What? Uh, what does your uh, uh, What does your mother say? Your father say about being a gang? They say that the gang is, you know. Tell me your mother or father. My mother, my mother and father say that the gang is bad for you. We all can lose or hurt you, but that's a lie because you know what they think is like they read in the papers every day, two or three people killed by a gang or something like that, but that doesn't always happen because you know, like your division. It's who you hang around with. They like the other two persons that might be wrong and shit. You know, they go around taking people off. It's like, I tell her that my division, you know, all we do is just hang around with each other, joke, drink, you know, get high, and just have fun in general. But they don't believe it because every other day, after you get them convinced a little bit, it comes out again. Oh, there was a rumble and P.S. this and that, and so many were hurt. So, you know, they say that it's bad for you. So, you, you know, you can never get a parent to agree with it. All uh, right, now, there's a fellow with the airplane on his hand here. Uh, well, what about your mother and father or sister and father? What do they say about the gang? It's the same thing, you know, they think that you're going to get hurt. But once you're in the gang and, you know, you don't look for trouble, you're all right. <coughs> the other gangs like you, and you're cool. Well, and there's a fellow with the butterfly there. <laughs> It's the same thing, you know, like... So tell me your mother and father or whoever it is and your sister. What about your sisters and brothers? What do they say? See, I see, I don't got no sister, right? But I got a brother, right? My brother tells me, you know, don't, don't be hanging out with these guys, you know, like... Like, I don't want you to be hanging out with them. So, but my mom, my moms and my uncle and all these people, you know, they don't agree with me of being in the clique. Like, if I be somewhere, like, if I be somewhere with these people, right? And they see me, right, the, 
like anybody and anybody else's family would they would tell they directly go to my family you know and tell them that i was with these people so you know but what is, what is your father that when he sees you with a gang? You must know you with a gang, right? See, they say, you know... Those are your foreigners here. Fellow with the glasses? Lester. Yeah, Lester. How about uh, your parents uh, in terms of gang or your brother or sister or anybody? What do you know what they say? She don't want me to be in a gang, but, you know, like... Tell um, me who she is, your mother? My mother. Yes, yeah, tell me the whole thing. My mother doesn't want me to be in a gang. My mother doesn't want me to be in a gang. What what's the what's the difference here between what your parents think and what you think you're doing? I mean, you say you have good relations with the neighborhood. Why why is this gap? What what do you think causes this gap between well, like, your thinking and what your parents are thinking? You can't blame like some of the parents for what they think. Or like my brother, he's 14 years old. He got stories to make our, our parents think that clubs are bad and stuff. That like um. Like they did a story in the New York Times about the clubs, and they and they put a whole bunch of lies in the story, you know. They exaggerated, said we did this and that, you know, stuff we we don't do. They exaggerated, you know. Uh, well, the Times just to say they said that uh, someone tried to leave the club or something. Like in the Times, like we said in our initiation, we put someone in a circle and get them fired up. In the Times, they put that the savage skulls hang their members upside down and beat them with pipes, you know, and that's you know that's a lie. That's not that's right. really And then I called exactly up the New York Times and I talked to the reporter. Problem, I talked to the reporter that did the story and he said he got all his information from the 48th precinct from Sergeant Collins, you know? So that they'd be getting all that information from the police precinct and the, those guys would just like be lying on us, you know? They'd be exaggerating the stories, you know? I'll tell you too, Captain Michaels. That's their thing, breaking us up. Now, well, why they must, uh, they have their reasons, right? What are their reasons? <coughs> they don't have reasons. Well, tell, tell me about the police then. Well, they have a uh, special unit. Well, this fellow, let him start. Tell me about the police. They don't have reasons. Just say the police are where it's right now. Well, the police are always with us for nothing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. saying, I'm not from his division. I'm from the 24th. Okay, so, what does I say, I say that, you know, if we walk around and you notice, a hell of a lot of people be walking around outside and if we walk around with our colors on we're you know the main ones that they're gonna grab even though they don't got no right to search us or anything they do it just to harass us and then they get us sometimes so mad that we feel on jump like i'm from the 24th i'm with my brothers right here and when we walk down the street the cops harass us so much that we feel like jumping them but we don't because we're never going to win it yeah, they have a See, special unit they, called the uh, law. They have a special unit called the Youth Gang Division, and they're the ones that be mostly bothering us. You know, taking our colors and putting us, searching us. You know, for no reason at all. We'd be walking down the street, they'd be stopping and searching us and taking our colors. You know, and bothering us. You know, that's the Youth Gang Division or Youth Tax Force, whatever it is. Because the other day, that's good for nothing. Called bottle wine. What's a bottle wine, man? Bottle wine ain't nothing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, they talk, just stop me today, man. I'm a probation. Cops stop me today. Yo, what you doing with a bottle of wine, man? I'm 19 years old. He can't ask me that. You know, and, and there's sometimes where around our ter our territory, we had people, you know, that they had called up the detectives so much that they sent the FBI after us. We had the FBI up there a few days ago. We was outside rapping, you know. And the FBI came down on us, and they they told us if we catch you flying colors around this neighborhood, you're gonna get hurt. You know, so if we really do have static with the police, I think it's you know gonna be a horrible sight. Too many times I tell the police, man, why I sleep at? It's my funeral box, man. That's my coffin. I sleep there many times. All right, now I'd like you to. Testing one two three four one two three four one two three four.
pays off this train. Well, that always been, you know, my best thing. And, uh, well, I used to dance before I came out clinic, and when I was doing my clinic, I used to dance. So I had laid by myself, you know, because I thought I was going to lose babies, something like that. So then, afterwards, I had my baby, and I went back to the place, see my friends all over again. Well, during school, they like, I used to just be interested in being with my friends and go to gigs, you know, during school days when I was supposed to be in school. So now I would like to go back, you know, start, study all my work all over again. And what I have missed, I would like to go back to it. Yes, I was a member and I liked it. Well, in the beginning I was like, Jalen was out, and like, I used to be hanging out with them. And like, I was... Um, uh, is there anything further to say about, uh, no. Uh, what about the, uh, this cut? This cut? Okay, then. Okay, you want to tell me how old you are with grade school? Well, I'm 17. I just finished it in my 17th in January, and I'm in the ninth grade. And I would like to start back to school, but I want somebody to tell me how, what to do all of this. Because I really want to go back to school. And in terms of the father, the father. Well, when I, during my pregnancy, the baby's father had denied this was in his kid. And he had never gave me a penny while I was pregnant. I used to take anything from my mother. And now that I had my baby, he, he comes here. He's fighting with me because he wants, him, he wants me to change his name. And he wants me to go with him, but I just don't want that. Because then I'll probably get messed up being with him. I know. And just finally, in terms of the jazz, uh, you now just saw the advances of the advances. Yeah. Well, only Fridays and Saturdays, you see, you know, understand the words of the, what the meaning is. No, I mean, I can read, <laughs> no, I can read, but there's somewhere that I don't know, so I just shut the book and go. Or else I want to know because I had heard that I dropped across the girl. So I want to find out where to go because I would like to go to Jack Court. Because if I go back to the school I used to go to, years ago, and I'm 40 years old, I probably wouldn't bother going in. Probably bother being with my friends. So I would like to My mother and my father got happy about me being in a javelin. My brother was in a javelin. All of us was in a javelin. That was the only organization my mother allowed us in because it was a decent organization. No trouble with no, you know, no other clerks. No fight for no cops. You had, you had a problem, you go to your head, you rap to one about it, they'll come out, they'll take it to the person. But there's an organization that they're jealous of us, you know. 
so some days and sometimes we used to have a little bit of argument. And we never had trouble with nobody in the street. Everybody likes us, they always will. Friday afternoon, I was in Nova, so on 5 o'clock Friday, we went to the hospital, and I was almost going to die, <laughs> excuse me, <laughs> so then finally I came out with one of my babies, there's a boy, he weighed 8 pounds with 7 ounces, and he was 20 inches long. Yes. I just finished having my baby on February the 17th at 7.18 p.m. He's a curious like me. Uh, uh, well, before I got one of the servers, I never used to smoke cigarettes, drink, or hardly even go to parties or hang out with other people, you know. I knew the Javelins because I used to go together, I used to go to school together with them. We grew up together. I went to the service and I got hooked on drugs in Vietnam. When I came out, I came out to the streets with a bigger habit, with a big habit. And I met up with my old friends, which are the Javelins. And they all agreed on helping me out. So I asked for their assistance. So they told me they wouldn't really help me as soon as I gave my share of it too. So I stood with them for a while. And when I came out of the service, they, they initiated me to become the vice president of the Royal Javelins. And I agreed, and I was a Javelin since I came out of service. And I, I left them for a while because their thing didn't work. I thought it didn't work, it was my fault. You know? I went back on drugs, I started going to jail, coming back out, going to jail, coming back out, same thing over and over. To my last time I went to jail, I decided to, you know, do it on my own. But I'm a medicine, they're not helpful nobody. What I did, I came out, I spoke to the, uh, the person who was in charge of the job at the time, and he told me, so he told me it was all right, I could, you know, hang out with them, as soon as I do nothing wrong, that would, you know, hurt them or, buy, you know, give them a bad reputation. So I stood there, I started hanging out with them, I kicked drugs, it took me close to about six months, you know, and I've been on drugs now for about a year and three months, and I never, I have, I have no idea, of, you know, going back to it. And when, I, when they seen that I was all organized, you know, all that drug thing was out of my mind, they were the warlord and the vice president, the president and the, the advisor and the speaker, they all had a meeting just with me, you know, in my room, in our old clubhouse, which is located in 1348, uh, 1438 by Science, excuse me. And we stood there, we were talking for about close to an hour. So they, they put some, some sense in my head, and I, you know, I agreed to go with them, and it's one thing I always look out for, I always look out for the Javelins, just the way they look out for me. I look out for anybody as soon as they look out for me. I, I don't have no disrespect for nobody, and uh, nobody has disrespect for me. We like each other in this neighborhood, uh, you know, I would like very much to stay this way. Uh, you have, uh, the Javelins have good relations with the people in the neighborhood? Yes, yes. Uh, well, at one time, the people didn't want to agree with us, and I'm not particularly saying about, you know, any violence. Well, we, we all agree on making a neighborhood, uh, neighborhood cleanup. You know, clean up the streets from one, one area to another certain area. And the sanitation department, you know, they volunteer to give us trucks and pick up all kind of garbage. We clean out the streets from Freeman Street to 172nd Street. We clean out three lots, empty lots, which were all filled up with garbage, you know, people throwing garbage out the window. And what we did, we made flyers. You know, seeing anybody caught throwing garbage out the window, we would, you know, be turned into the police. Because if it's, if we went out there and we put a little bit of sweat to clean the, the streets, 
and the lots. I mean, they should have consideration for us too. They should agree with us too. Yeah. And ever since, you know, things things started working out just beautiful. No, no hassle. Everybody, all these people that live around this neighborhood, you know, when they see. But right now, they're not scared no more. It's not like before, you know. People be standing. They a whole bunch of group of fellas be sitting on the steps, you know. People walk walk by. They think right away they're gonna be taken off or they're gonna do something, you know. But now, you know, when mostly we stay out late, you know, to watch the people. You know, but some of the people in the streets don't realize what we do for them. You know, this is why they don't. In some ways, they don't agree with us to what we say. Not to what we say, what we ask. You know. uh, in terms of uh, the Vietnam experience, did the organization of the gang have anything to do with that? Tell us how old you are, also. Mm -hmm. Well, all the members are. Well, I'm the second oldest member in the Germans. No, I'm, excuse me, I'm the third oldest member of the Germans. And uh, so far, we have, let me see, from the Germans right now, we have, we used to have young Germans and girl Germans, but, you know, we figure on just being adults. This way we have no problems, you know, with mothers or fathers or, you know, nobody else in the streets. Because sometimes, you know, the fellow is there late, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning, and that's no time for a girl or a young fellow to be on the street. So the average age for the job is from a 16, you know, from 16 on. Okay. Uh, now, uh, well, just tell us your, your attitude of your club now in terms of uh, uh, drugs, violence, and so on. What, what is the attitude, the attitude of other gangs? Suppose that other gang starts hassling you or whatever the expression is. Mm. What happens? Well, so far since, uh, well, to start off, in my organization, we do not allow any drugs, no kind of addiction. You know? If, for an example, if a member comes in and he's, you know, he's, he's an addict and he's willing to get off it and, you know, he asks us for our help, me, myself, with the experience I have with drugs, I'm willing to help him out any time. As soon as he gives me his part of the share, I will do it for him. Uh, well, about this violence about other organizations, well, before this program came up, which is called Lifestyles, where I'm, I'm an employee there, uh, you see, I have all kind of different organizations, you know, all kind of violence, which javelins, turbans, and other organizations. Well, this this uh, job I have from Lifestyle, it's a youth development project. It deals with gangs out in the South Bronx. Okay. Right now, we're trying to put a location in each five boroughs. Now, ever since this job came through. Now we have all the all, all the organizations going out to our club, which I'm talking about is organizations which we used to fight with. You know, we said uh, we can't we couldn't get along with each other. And since uh, my director Ralph Morales, you know, came to me and he asked me, and he didn't want really particularly ask me. He came and talked to me about this program. You know, he told me all of the the meanings of the of the uh, program. So he came to me, and I agreed. I agreed with him 100 percent. I tell him I'll go with him, you know, 100%. I'll go with him all the way as long as there's no problem, you know, nothing will get in my way or get in this way to put him in the bag. Uh, just tell me about your efforts working with other gangs, but the gang we're going to do this afternoon. Uh, there's this organization that's called, they, they just came out the night to, uh, the name is uh, Social Gents. They are lo they're located in Home Street between, uh, I think it's West, uh, Westchester and Home Street. And Mostly all these members are ex turbans which my group couldn't get along with them at the time. And they joined this organization, and my job, Lifestyle, you know, spoke to them. And right now we're going to sign a peace treaty because we get along with each other. They come down to our club every day. Mostly all of them come down Friday and Saturdays when we throw dances in our club, you know. Different organizations go there. But these are uh, people, social gents. Uh, uh, half of the percent, half of the percent of them are ex uh, ex turbans Mostly, uh, let me see. You have well, the ones that are in it are the ones that usually, you know, used to get fight with. You know, I'm not talking particularly about the the other ones. And we get along with them. We shake their hand. We speak to each other. We go to each other's houses, each other's clubs. You know, when they got a dance or a wedding or whatever it is, they invite us first before anybody else, and we do the same thing for them. This is why we've done. Today, about 5 o'clock, we're going to sign a peace treaty between the social gents and the royal javelins. Uh, now, uh, do you have any, can you explain the idea of peace treaty? Is there such a thing as a term? 
Yes, uh, yes. Uh, our territory will be starting from Freeman Street. Will be Ho, Vice, Bryant, Longfellow, and Boone. From Freeman Street to 173rd. That's uh, blocking off Ho, Longfellow, Vice, and Bryant. This, that's all our territory. Because from 173rd on to 175th, it's, uh, I think it's, they call uh, peacemakers. Right? From 175th to Daly, it's the Reapers. And then from Freeman Street on, it's the Social Gents. You know? Then I'm not talking about South uh, West Bronx and the other side of the South Bronx. You see, in the West Bronx, you have all different organizations. There. You have Black Space, Black Assassins, uh, Savage Skulls, Ghetto Brothers. You know, you know, so many, I can't name them all. You know. What happens when one, when one group goes into another, another turf? I mean, what, what, uh, how does this work out? What well, is the KCA going to? Well, right now, turf or something like that? Uh, well, uh, but the ministers, I can't really tell you enough about because if they were to come around here, and me, myself, like, if I was to see them, you know, I would stop them. I'm not talking particularly about, you know, putting out any weapon or something, or, you know, getting all violent and nasty with them, you know. I will come and down to my club, you know, and like right now the ministers are having, you know, uh, violence in this high school called Lehman High School. Ministers and some other organizations. You know. Now I never, I never seen a minister. You know, I never seen that organization. I know they're located somewhere by Parkway or something like that. I don't know. But if they were to walk in my territory, I would, you know, talk to them and try to put involve them in my job. Presidente de Sarangá, el nocturno. Yo no sé, no sé cuál es el presidente. Se tiene que averiguar cuál es el presidente de la. Eso tiene que averiguar si ahora hay un meeting, ¿verdad? Ahí está por aquí, ahí está el 
No, no, eso es el Vice President mío. ¿Qué me dijo? Eso, te voy a poner la foto como yo, como yo el Ajá. Y yo el Presidente, ¿entiendes? Ajá. Ah, te cago esta cabrón, pa. Ajá. Eh, esta gente, tú sabes, eso es creo hace poquito costado, ¿verdad? Ajá. Porque eso son como se dio ahorita eso son ex javelins ex javelins right? Ajá. Uh -huh. Pero no vale la pena que tengo que pelear con ellos porque son ex, ex javelins ¿no? Uh -huh. Y se ve mal que nosotros teníamos... Pero, You come over every time, you hang out with us and shit, man. You come to our party, man. You know, my people respect you, you respect my people. You know, that's why you know we're getting along better now. Mm -hmm. That's why I want to, you know, speak to you all. I mean, if you want to agree with me on signing the peace treaty, you know, this way, whenever you know you need help, you got it. You know, we need it. We got it. You know. Okay, well, we'll sign the peace. We work together. We straighten these things out, man. Okay, well, and prove to the people that this is happening. That's right. We got to show these people, you know, that. Uh, Ain't no more dolphins out here, you know, we gotta go on the run, man, you know, get our things together. See, like, you got your club here, we got ours over there. When we fix ours, you go down here, but you know what I mean? This, this is what I want, you know, it's going to look nice, you understand? Good yeah, dancing, yeah. going together, you know, some bus rides, man. Right. Look, this is, this is my, this is my wall on. To color. This is Louis. This is Louis. This is Louis. And this is, uh, Louis. Yeah. But this is my wall console. This is my vice. Seven. That's my treasurer, William, President Angel, and my All right. All right. I mean, President Javis. Uh, you know, now that things are straightened out, man, you know, that stuff, everything comes out nice, man. They straighten out the people, they straighten out our people, and people out on the outside, too, man. You know, yeah, okay. Showing that we, you know, not that particular that we never want, but, you know, that we, we right. the, you know, the coolest and conservative, most conservative people out, in, you know, out here, can't they? Yeah. Big it? Yeah. Okay. See, because, like, we came out with this name, Social Justice. Mm -hmm. Before, like you say, we were the Terrians, we were the Jalans, you know, we were rumbling with each other here. We said, well, you know, this is not for us. We started hanging down here, we started this new thing. Just because we got the sweaters, this ain't a club. This, you know, I mean, it's not a gang busting thing. You understand? It's a social club. We want to make money for our own. All right. Okay? Yeah, well, come on, like, with a place that you got in here, you know, like, for instance, the bags you throw, man, yeah. you want to do something like that, too, you think? Because it's nice, you think? But the other thing is, we gotta do something for ourselves, man, because we don't get block away from each other, man. That's right. And that's what it is. It is. You know, you know, your people got, you know, when you, when your girls had birthday or something, and you need a place to throw a dance, man, you know, you got it. Hope things work out better, and they will, bro. Everything be alright. You know, you got a nice thing going on, man. You know, you're from the club around here, man. You got something going on nice, man. For what I've seen so far, you yeah. If we work together, man, we'd be the best, man. Us two, we'd be the best, man. You know, the two, the two, the people and the big people, you know, that think that, you know, just, you know, guys are just, you know, side, we're fucking up the side Bronx, you know? We, we prove to them, man, you know, that we're doing the right way, you dig it? You know, there's no such thing as the wrong way. We got to, man. You see, you see how the buildings are going down? Man, who's living around here? Only us, man. Yeah, let's check it out. You understand? And if we don't look out for it, who is? Who is? Look at those two, you know? Like, you, you see buildings there, man, you know, like, some stupid, they don't even want to run it, man, you know. Buildings that never get come down, man. Dude, that's where we come, we go right to the middle, we run the building, we clean the building for you, man. We work the ball out, man, you know, work it out. So this way, you know, whenever somebody needs club out or something, man, or the fellas, you know, that there, we got a, one of your family, one of my family that should need, you know, place to create, man. We got it right there, didn't we? So people dig us, and we dig the people, and boom, man, you know. Well, I'm not okay, man. The best there is, man. You know, social justice, challenge. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
have it that way, you know, the Germans and the social gents, you understand? Right. And we're just going to have to fix this thing up and, you know, get along with each other better, man. Right. So, you know, this way, what we're doing now, this is proving to the people that all these weapons are unnecessary. They, right. They're speaking with each other, man, face to face, straighten down things better, man. Instead of just a knife, chain, or gun, whatever it is, just to prove right. to the people, man, that, you know, we ourselves are doing it the right way and the other people should do it the same way as we're doing it. Then they start using all those weapons, you know what I mean? Like, we don't have to well, do nobody here. yet, you know, but like, uh, there's people, there's people that come out here, you know, and they see us, you know, with the sweater they think, you know, we're gang, but yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. we're not out, you know, like, listen, we're not gonna put ourselves low, we're not gonna put ourselves high, man, but we're not out, you know, for nobody to jab around with us, we don't jab around with nobody, you dig? We be in peace, have a nice time, like we come over here, man. We have been invited here, we were welcome in here, and it's nice. You think everybody get along together? This is what I want, man. You think a community like this, man. And you can walk around the streets, you know, and be free, man. Alright, this, this is what we gotta do, man. Matter of fact, you know, I work, I work in this program, man. It's called Lifestyle, you dig it? It, got, it has about 12 gangs there, you know. You, know, you got two guys from each gang working there, you know. They had Javans, Ghetto Brothers, Savage Skulls, uh, um, what else? Tell me about your colors. Now, how long are we rolling? Can you tell me about your colors, the, the structure of this group, the beginning and so forth? Alright, so I'll tell you about the Imperial um, stands for how we stand. We stand up up. And like, the bachelors, you know, because we try to be free. As much as possible, we always try to be free. And like, the reason why we use red, black, and green, because like, we can't use red, black, and blue, because like, even though the Puerto Rican flag consists of this, so we have these red, black, and green because like, because red, black, and blue is um has American flag colors, and so like even though the red, black, and green stands for the Puerto Rican people, just as much as it stands for us, so we always have to have this Puerto Rican flag 
They say that we unify with the Puerto Ricans. Okay, now, uh, who, who are the different offices in the club? Uh, and tell me, tell me about that. Like, they have the Preds right here, and I'm the vice of the Imperial, right? And so we have juniors, like they're supposed to have JL, but some of them, they just had got their colors made up. And so we have uh, um, the Young Bachelors. The Young Bachelors there is, seem to be a uh, you know, wide amount of with Young Bachelors. Now, uh, you have also a, a girl di division, what is that? Who would explain that to me? Um, the girl division, tell me that. Our, our press went away, so me and her taking over. So, so I walk, counselor, she's vice. Alright, we're on. Okay. Tell me about the initiation. Um, like, it's not, like, we don't really initiate anybody. That, like I said before, like, you learn a thing. Like, you, like you, learn a, you learn a lot of different things, but it depends on what type of person you are. Like, we have meetings in council, and we just talk, you know, we find out why you're leaving all this here. Because, like, we, we let this dude go scot-free, man, because he was right on member, just like that. Now, do you have initiations or don't you? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's exactly. what I want to know. Why we got initiation for out. A $25, $25 fine, but you get beat up. If you don't pay $25, um, $25 fine, you know, you get all the members, everybody in the back, you get two straight lines. You get to walk through there, walk through there about ten times. And then we get hooked to your, then we get hooked to your rope with a, with a belt, with the buckle, or the chain. And sometimes we use a bat on this dude. He, he was all right after a couple of months, but you know, cause like he, he had quit a couple of months ago. And so he, we, had, we had to take a couple of months to catch up with him. Cause we have pitch, we have different pictures of different members. And like we, that we keep in a file. Like everything is going all right. But like if you, it depends on what type of member you are. Now what, what do you mean by it? What do you mean it depends on what type of member you are? Like I said, like I said, like if you, you come to all the meetings, you pay your dues on time, and you go to more, like we say we go as a place, if mostly, you know, if you come up and everything, you know, like if you go when we go, you know, everything's all right. We probably talk, and then we probably give you about five lashes, chain, or the, you know, like, and sometimes we play cards down here, and that if you, you know, like, if you, if you pluck a, a certain type of card, you get a chain, a bat, or the belt, or you take a chance at me throwing a knife at you, and if I throw a knife at you, at you I'm planning on sticking you in your back. All right, now, in other words, you to get out, you pay the, the uh, initiation. You get $25 fine, yeah, right. or, or the, you know, the you general. get initiated, you know, okay. you get it. Now, now, what about the girls? The girls have, what system do the girls have? The girls, we, well, kick the ass of somebody. We, we, we. See, like, I'll, 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 maybe I can talk, maybe I can clarify that. Like, it's, um, like, the girls, the main people have, like, if the girls do something, they need to take it their own crap, right? But like, if, you know, like if something affects, like if something affects the girls, it affects us as a whole. And like the main people, the main people that'll be striking across their behind is the girl members and me and this man here and our warlord. Because right. like we're the upper class. Uh, final thing, why, why do you think there are gangs or why should there be gangs? Because like, like, and you have, I like a, lot, a number of ideas. All right. Like Cause one, I think that that they that they fuck that they um like being a part of something. Well, two, I think like you know everybody likes to be together, you know, like you know everybody likes to be together, you know, down the white boys. And when like when you don't got nobody to fight, man, that's what happens. That's when black and Puerto Rican fight together. That ain't right, man. They shouldn't be doing that shit. And they should just you know all get together, and just roll down on the whites. Three. Mm -hmm. Of the junkies, you know, people like that. Yeah, you know, like somebody, they beat you up, you got nobody back you up, so you join a glad, a gang, and so they help you out. And like, every, 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 every
Go ahead, you go ahead. Yeah. Like this man over here, he has he has this problem that he you know that he dislikes white people no matter what they are. He keeps talking about the mafia man. Like the mafia man, they don't have something to do for me. Man. I've been dealing with them before, but I don't call them the mafia. I call them my friends, man. I think you know no matter how white they are, you, you like if you want to treat me cool, I'm gonna treat you cool. Like if you need your shoes shine, I shine them and you shine mine. One hand washes the other. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. Hey, job, tell him right on. Thank you. 
Sabe que planeje? Eu vou com um filho de olho. Thank you.